Guest, we go on to the Ron Brandt video since it's a little bit long because um, I worry we'll, we'll run out of time at the end. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So we may have to save the other two for next week. Uh, they're all great videos. They're all great lessons, great teachings. Yeah, but just go ahead and save them for next week because, yeah, we wanted to get at least 30 minutes on the questions and comments. So you're, you're right. We need to move on to the Ron Brandt video. Okay. So uh, so this is the last installment of the uh, entire uh, presentation. And uh, why don't we come back afterwards and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. We've got some good news to share on it yep. as well. Yep. Okay. If I do it right here. Here we go. And, uh, but I like to see something that's marketable that uh, you can take home and count on working. Anyhow, the, uh, uh, after we quit trying to do it Eklund's way, I uh, took all this investment and we looked at it and uh, done some experiments with resonance and took that same amount of iron, same rotor, and we was able to put it into resonance and damn near killed me because it put out 30,000 volts at three amps coming out of that little generator. And uh, it jumped about eight inches, hit me on the arm, blowed this arm up like a ballpark frank, and I landed on the floor. I mean, I'm not kidding you a bit, this wrist and hand was just stretched like a balloon. It boiled the blood instantly. I thought maybe I'd lost my arm for a little bit, but uh, I checked the nerves and the nerves were still alive. So in about a half an hour to an hour, the, all the swelling went back down. But I had a sore here where the, it jumped and hit me on the elbow, came out my fingers. <coughs> So I had some respect for it. And uh, then, then I tried to figure out how to use this to uh, make energy units for motorhomes, RVs, or people that live out in the boondocks where there is no power and make it safe so it isn't going to kill somebody. And even if I could make money on something, if it's not safe, I won't, I won't play with it. I won't let somebody have it. If anybody's going to get killed, it's going to be me because it won't hurt me. But uh, uh, the, uh, I had to go to the power company and buy a power line transformer so I could cut this 30,000 volts down to 118 volts so I could use it and the frequency was running a little over 900 uh, cycles per second so it wasn't, it wasn't when i tried to get it down to 60 cycles i couldn't maintain resonance the iron i used m19 in that and uh, the balance of iron i could not get it to resonate at 60 cycles go into resonance and stay there and uh, so I've got it sitting under my bench in the shop. And someday, uh, when I have more time and money than I got common sense, I'll probably play with it again. And uh, some soul in essence, I would like to see everybody uh, get on the ball and do what they can to get somewhere uh, and a lot of people are in the same boat I am. I invested a lot of money into Eklund's deal. I put a lot of money into this, and, and uh, then I uh, uh, had people that uh, uh, wanted me to do work for them, and they sent me checks, and they were made out of rubber, and I got them, I got them in the safe. They bounce like a ball, but I figured someday. I might get some rubberized acrylic and put these checks in that so I can use them for paperweights and bounce them off the wall when I haven't got anything else to do. Uh, anyhow, so much for being funny. That's my weird sense of humor. Anyhow, getting back to the motor. I put this, I took a 
37 kilowatt Cato generator that had a 60 horsepower diesel engine driving it. I took the diesel engine off and had, had them haul it to the scrapyard because it had thrown a rod through the side. I only bought it because I wanted the generator in the first place. And the Cato generator, for those of you that don't know a Cato generator, they are... Okay, we are back. Okay, so you want to explain <laughs> what happened? Okay, that uh, fourth installment was actually a copy of the third installment we watched last week. And uh, so I, I have uh, two files that are, that are named differently, but are actually the same content. Uh, and I don't actually have the last segment. So um, we will. Okay. Did you, did you, are you pretty sure in other words, did you fast forward that one and watch the end of it? And maybe it's twice as long. Yeah, I did. I, I compared it with the one uh, that I showed uh, last week and they are the same video. Okay. So um, yeah, I thought it looked familiar. Yeah, yeah I did uh, too. <laughs> Of course, last week I had a distraction right in the middle, so I didn't catch it all. But uh, so I, I kind of enjoy listening to it, but uh, because I didn't catch it all last week. But uh, it's okay; I don't want to bore the whole audience with it. Uh, One of the things that I thought was uh, interesting about it was uh, Ron giving you his, uh, um, I guess, his recollection and uh, experience with the um, Eklan um, device and how it kind of morphed into the uh, QEG after he uh, changed it all around. <laughs> yeah, well, the key, QEG was designed, just so people know, a quantum energy generator or the 40 kilowatt machine was designed uh, way back with Tesla and, and Brandt. But he, uh, you know, I've heard this story. You know, I don't know when they actually built the first one, whether it was whether it was uh, way back there or whether it was after they worked on the Eklund. Uh, design, but basically the the core was close enough that they only had to change the rotor. So they only had to do some modifications on the rotor and rewind the core. And you know that was a big job, of course, rewinding the core. But you know w once they did that, then it was ready to use for the uh, uh, the Tesla design, of, which is called the QEG nowadays, uh, quantum energy generator. And Ron. Uh, uh, and I saw, you know, I've saw, it, seen it operate hundreds of times, also thousands of times probably now. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it does, he says on the video, put out 30,000 volts at 3 amps. And he just said that. And But I've also heard him say it to put out 40,000 volts at 3 amps. And I've seen 40,000 volts at 3 amps, which is 120,000 watts, by the way. Uh, and that's loaded. And... Uh, so there's a lot of power in that thing. And, uh, you know, we call it 40 kW, but that's on the conservative side, honestly. And, uh, you know, those things need to be mass produced. They can be made smaller. And, uh, matter of fact, the flush switch transformer is a version of that device, solid state, much smaller. Uh, and we do teach it on the, you know, it's, you know, if anybody wants to learn it, uh, you know, the flux switch transformer and other transformers like it, uh, other machines variations on it are available on the gifts page uh and i i so i think we're gonna have to show the rest of it next week yeah. the part four next week yeah okay. we're gonna show the part four next week also um there was gonna be something i was gonna talk about um uh, we've got some i think pretty exciting i think it's exciting okay what i was gonna mention was uh, i i know we have viewers popping in and out all the time and i know that uh we may have viewers that don't know too much about uh, the ministry uh, that find us some other way and they happen to go on our live stream broadcasts and they're just sort of listening in. Um, but what these machines are, are f what you might say are fuelless power plants. So, uh, you know, if you're unfamiliar with this types of technologies, I know a lot of our listeners are, our viewers are, and that's how they found us. But in case you're you know, you came in some other way and you didn't know anything about this. These are actual machines that produce power and they don't require your, your typical fuels or, or electricity. You don't have to plug them in. You don't have to put solar panels on them. You don't have to, uh, you know, put gas or oil in them. Uh, these are machines that work, you know, on different principles that the ministry has, um, I guess, you know, figured out a long, long time ago and has, uh, you know, over the... Uh, decades or centuries even um, perfected more and more different ways of, of doing these types of things and and for the most part these have not been available 
in the public realm, uh, and they've been basically either suppressed or they've been sort of pushed away into top secret projects, uh, gone underground in the secret space program and so forth. Uh, yeah. for other breakaways breakaway civilizations. Right. All these technologies are really big and they've been developed and they're you know, they're smaller and lighter and more powerful and so on. Uh, you know, so yeah, I was telling you how we developed and this is in all the almost all the uh, the big um, uh, big jets. We developed a motor and a generator. It's both just like the 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 Brandt motor that he's showing is both a motor and a generator and it's up to five hundred horsepower on the big one. Uh, probably 12 inches, 14 inches in diameter, 14 inches long, somewhere in that range, uh, 500 horsepower. We developed uh, a small uh, motor generator that's only about uh, this big around, uh, two, two inches or so, two and a half, something like that, and about uh, five, six inches long. And that one put out 250 horsepower, uh, or if you ran it as a generator, it put out about... Uh, uh, 250,000 watts, roughly, and that that is standard in issue now. Is in all the uh, the jets that fly internationally, uh, maybe more. In other words, it's at least in all the international jets, uh, the ones that fly internationally, uh, and then it produces uh, you know all the electricity and so on uh, that it needs. And they're not; those are not in the jets. They're not over Unity, but they can be made over Unity. I've had those particular machines over Unity. They do have a controller if you use them as a motor. Uh, and the jets are using them as a generator, and uh, the, the turbine spins it at that super high speed. Yeah, that's, and that's a that's a whole lot of power coming out of a little device there. That is that is a huge amount of power coming out of a little device, and uh, that technology could you know that, like I say these things have been made better and better and better, and uh, it's just a matter of funding to get uh, home power systems in mass production. So. Appreciate everything everybody's doing out there. Keep spreading the word. The solutions are here. Right. Now, now then, just on a uh, on a note, I, I would like to talk about just for a second. Uh, you've got some plans that we're going to announce next week, uh, where the Brant motor will be possibly available for people to work on if they want, and uh, there'll be plans available, and uh, we'll have a special guest next week that's going to tell us all about that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so that's our surprise for next week. Uh, so it'll fit because we're doing the last segment, and so it'll still fit just fine, uh, the last part of the Brent, uh, video next week. And, uh, yeah, our guest is... Uh, he doesn't want to say his name, but it'll be in the newsletter. He said it's okay to put it in the newsletter next week. Next so week. I'm not going to say his name. Next, yeah. next week, everybody will know yeah, him. Next, and hopefully next week he has his website ready to go because he's going to offer plans on uh, the, the brand motor. And then the ministry is going to offer plans about a week later. So, uh, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna, we're giving him a week head start. Uh, wonderful brother in the Lord. And uh, what's, great about, what's great about this, though, you told me that uh, he actually uh, – was part of the team that was working yeah. back then on the emo yeah. li like you of course and yeah. uh yeah. um that's pretty cool there were uh one two three four five six of us on the team and i may have stated that five previously i you know I, anyway five or six and, you know some people are more on the team than others some are, some are <laughs> kind of like so, some are more like they cut you off once a week and others are like they're, you know, 24 hours a day, you know, so, you know, some are more on the team than others. <laughs> but uh, there were six people on the team, five that were really diligent and hardworking. And of those, Ron is the only one that's passed away. Uh, all of us were younger than Ron and uh, we're all still kicking and, uh, and driving and I just kicking and we're prospering. <laughs> And, you know, God is making things happen. And uh, so we're optimistic that we can get this. Uh, this would be a great uh, free energy device to run the home or, you know, power your car or whatever. And uh, it can be closed loop, uh, you know, so. Um, yeah, I see, you know, I, I see that, uh, you know, with uh, Ron showing off that smaller one on the uh, on the demonstration. I see that as a fantastic uh, little power plant for a small car. and uh, yeah. Or maybe, you know, power each wheel with it. I don't know. Be plenty yeah, powerful. Yeah, well, horsepower is plenty, and and actually that one we 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 did it sixty horsepower many times, and uh, so, and it it'll run sixty horsepower. And we originally called it a ten horsepower, and of course the more we worked with it, the better we got it. As you go up in speed, uh, if you're not having heat problems, 
you can get more horse. You get about four, if you double your speed, you get about four times the horsepower roughly on a motor. And uh, heat is what limits the maximum power output of a motor. Uh, always input and output. It's the internal heating. And this one ran extremely cool, and uh, even under tremendous load. It, you know, it heated up a little, but not much. Sixty horsepower is quite a bit of load. And that was at uh, around 10,000 RPM as well. In other words, the speed was very high, and more than you know, more than most, more power and more speed than most dynamometers can handle. Honestly, mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of we messed. I think I said this the last week or the week before. We messed up a lot of dy dynamometers uh, with this, these motors. We just burned them up. I mean, just busted them or whatever. You know. <laughs> Pulled the bolts out or broke the bolts. Well, they're not whatever. they're not used to having such a little power plant put out so much power. I mean, they don't. That's uh... exactly right. That's exactly right. And uh, anyway, so my my estimate, honestly, is that the little one could eventually be perfected to put out, uh, and everything's perfected is just by degrees. You know, it eventually could put out four times sixty, which is two hundred and forty. Wow. Uh, the little one, which which you know, sixty is enough to run a car. Honestly. Right. 60 horsepower, real horsepower. We're talking about real horsepower here. We're not talking about combustion horsepower, which is always a big joke. Uh, I don't think, when they say it's a 240 horsepower combustion engine, there's no way you're getting 240 horsepower to the wheels on most vehicles. Uh, there's not even half of that, in my uh, guesstimate. Well, uh, not only that, but it's so, you know, it's so optimal at, you know, at very precise, you know, operating speed and so forth, you know, that's when they're trying to measure it. And, and that's not right. real world driving. We're but, These electric motors don't have a lot of those uh, limitations. They they have horsepower, yeah. you know, across a larger uh, band. Yeah, I a, uh, we the ministry has a car over in the Philippines, and it's rated, uh, I think, at 200 horsepower or something. And on level ground, if you go to accelerate, level ground, you're going 30 miles an hour, you go to accelerate, step on the gas. That thing, it's everything it can do just to accelerate. You know, that's you know that's like one or two horsepower getting to the wheels. You know, it's just <laughs> insane. It's just insane, ridiculous. You know, it's just you hear it squeaking and groaning, and it sounds like the engine's gonna blow up, and you know, and it's just level ground. You know, and uh, you know, it's just anyway. It's uh, yeah, these the leg drink is the way to go, and free energy is the way to go, and uh, yeah, we're getting closer all the time. So this is one of the things uh, when I taught about staying in faith on financial matters, especially when it's a matter of changing the whole world. You do have to be determined. To stay in faith, you can't give up. Uh, you know, Tesla stayed in faith his whole life. Ron Brandt stayed in faith in his whole life. That, that eventually these things would get out, and that are they are getting out in Jesus' name, and they are now. They are. They finally are. But we want them mass produced. We want them. You know, we have some things mass produced. We want. We want all of them mass produced. Honestly, all the really good ones mass produced. That's what we want, and we're going to stay in faith until it manifests. So if it takes a month or a year, a lot of people give up if it doesn't happen right away within a month or two months or five months. They give up. I'm not giving up. I'm gonna. I'm determined, and it is happening. It is happening. I see it happening already, and I see it going to happen a lot bigger and a lot better. That's right. That's yeah. that's that's very right. So, okay. So next week we'll have the. Uh, we'll try to get the. We'll try to get the right segment playing, and uh, uh, then we'll have our special guest on. Tell us more about that.